right, do you have carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome is just a tunnel, an anatomical structure in our wrist, and the median nerve is the nerve that goes through that area. And that is an area where you're getting a pinching or compressed nerve. That is carpal tunnel. At the end of this video, you're going to get two tests that you can do at home to figure out if you have um, possibly carpal tunnel syndrome. Listen, we can't diagnose, physical therapists can't diagnose, you can't diagnose, but what you can do is get a strong idea if you possibly have this particular problem. Because a lot of things can give you numbness in your hand. We have to make sure we have the right one. All right, so several people um, that develop this problem, it's more common in women, there's apparently twice as many, um, it's also common in people that are over 40. Um, certain occupations, things that require repetitive movements, oftentimes can call it be uh, a cause or a trigger for this particular syndrome. And then another area that we're not going to go into today is more of a crush or a, or a fracture, an acute injury. You just had a, had a suitcase land on your wrist or other reasons this can occur. But we're going to talk more about the repetitive nature of a carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, so basically it's a form of a pinched nerve. A lot of times for different problems in your body, they'll say that a nerve is being pinched. Okay, um, for the sake of the median nerve, which is the nerve that runs through this tunnel, we're going to just show you our little hand here. This is basically how the hand position is right here. We're looking at these little carpal bones, hence the name carpal, and you have a ligament that comes across here. And in between, underneath it, it's a very close-knit compartment. All right, very, very tight. So what happens is if there's any swelling or problems in that area, the nerve doesn't function as well. So you have tendons that run through there. You have vascular structures and all that that run through this small tunnel. And by repetitive movements, sometimes you can cause them inflammation. Since there's not a lot of room in that tunnel, it could affect the way the nerve conducts. And the nerve has this flow back and forth, almost like a, you know, almost like a electrical circuit that goes past. We're almost like a, I like to call it like a hose, like a garden hose, all right? You've got water pressure that comes off our, our spine up here, all the way down series of nerves down to this area. And then if it gets compressed or pinched, it'll cause weird sensations or weakness down further down the line, okay? But what people don't often think about is that the median nerve, what we don't really talk about a lot, is the median nerve can be compressed from other areas further up the chain. Okay, um, you, so we have to make sure we got the right structure that's affected for the right treatment plan. Okay, especially when we talk about stretching. So there's other sites that will know where it runs through some of the muscles of the forearm. It goes right around the elbow and such, up around the uh, the shoulder. They can give you a median nerve compression that we'll talk about in other videos. One of them is called a pronator uh, syndrome, and that we have to consider. So we have to make sure we're in the right spot and we're having you know the right point where it's being compressed. So we talked about what's going up that nerve. It's basically, you know, flow coming off the neck. These uh, small nerves that come off of your neck that all come together and run all the way down the arm. And they provide strength, you know, pain sensation. They can uh, um, provide like a motor or strength to the muscle, you know, kind of an impulse to the muscle or sensation. So you can feel different things. Uh, one of the things we do is they call a nerve conduction, conduction test. And what that test does is it finds out um, if a nerve is passing a certain point, if there's a change in how fast that nerve conducts. Like, does it go 50 miles per hour? And then when it passes this point, it goes down to 30 miles per hour. Well, if that nerve changes its speed, the nerve conduction study says, oh, that's probably the point that it's compressed. Also, sometimes they'll look at what the normal speed of a nerve. Every nerve is rated at a certain speed. So some will go 50 miles per hour, some will go 40. And knowing what the norm is, we also understand how that nerve is functioning. So nerve conduction studies give us a little idea on where that nerve is compressed and really gives us a, um, a portion or a diagnosis. But also realize what you complain about and your symptoms are also very important in the proper diagnosis of your syndrome. So making sure you educate your doctor and therapist you know, what are you experiencing and when are you experiencing? So what are some of the signs and symptoms of carpal tunnel? In this diagram, it shows where the median nerve provides sensation in your hand. And this is oftentimes where you have symptoms. We also depict the ulnar nerve and radial nerve. So I'm going to show you on my hand just kind of where it is, and I'll show you on the other point here. So you can have a tingling, numbness, or pain, especially at night. Nighttime pain, especially in the palm area, is very common in carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, So you'll notice it in the thumb here. 
uh, your index finger, long finger, and you'll actually find like a line is actually on this side of your ring finger, you'll have a lot of symptoms. Um, you can have pain in other areas, but that's the most common distribution. Some people, their nerves don't run in the exact way, but most people, median nerve is in that area. If you have numbness or pain in other areas, it could be another nerve compression problem, or another, it could even be a, a, a circulation problem, it could be something else, okay? So consider that, that's one of the main things. You'll also notice sometimes you'll have atrophy. Um, what you'll notice is, uh, and this is more in advanced cases, you'll see in this area they call the thenar. This is the hypothenar and thenar. Thenar right here, those muscles, the median nerve goes to, and it contributes to like gripping and, and, and coming across with your hand. And you'll notice people get clumsy, they'll start not being able to write as well, or they, you know, some of those, those functions are hard, they'll start dropping things. And those are some of the symptoms that you may notice before, uh, before you receive a, for, a formal diagnosis. Another thing, you know, as we talk about diagnosis here, um, what we really have to be careful about is one of the big things I look for in our clinic here, and, uh, and I don't expect patients to do this, is to make sure uh, any of these symptoms are coming from the neck. Okay, so one of the things we'll talk about is clearing the neck. We'll take um, someone, we'll say, okay, why don't you move your neck back, forth, side to side, and we'll take them through a variety of movements. And what we want to see is when we take them through a variety of movements, we're moving their neck, if they start nosing, that they're getting pain and symptoms or the same pain they're coming here for, you may have some problem at your neck, not necessarily the median nerve. And in some cases, unfortunately, you can have um, some pressure here at the nerve here and pressure here, and those two points are creating a lot of problems. You know, um, a book by David, uh, a lot of research by this guy David Butler talked about um, different points where you're getting compression. So when you lose, you have a little compression here, it makes it a little easier, unfortunately, for the nerve to get pinched and start becoming symptomatic, painful, or weak further down the, down the line. It's like you're losing water pressure from your neck off the spinal cord and all these nerves. So something to consider, and anytime you see someone, um, any therapist uh, or doctor, really should make sure, make sure the neck isn't part of the equation. All right, so we're gonna give you two tests. The next two tests is called a Phalen's test or a Tinel sign, okay? Um, there's different versions, but Phalen's is one of the ones you'll notice the most. So, when we're talking about any kind of um, problem as far as the carpal tunnel or, or, or compression to the median nerve, the nerve that's in that tunnel, um, a lot of time is repetitive use. Sometimes computer use, it could be someone on an assembly line, um, anything that's repetitive, especially with a lot of ex um, flexion extension excessively. So what we're going to do, the Phalen's test essentially, this is where the carpal tunnel, this is where we have the ligament across here. On our finger, when you see this little mass here, the thenar, excuse me, the thenar and the hypothenar, right in this little point right here above the wrist crease is where our transverse carpal ligament is, okay? So that's the spot right there. So when we go ahead and we extend, extend it or we flex it, we narrow that very tight space, okay? So anything excessively extended or flexed will make that space tighter. And if there's inflammation in there or scar tissue or anything like that, it'll make it the less room for you to work, for that nerve to work. And it makes you almost like leaning on your funny bone in a way, but in a different spot. So the phalanx test, you basically flex, uh, flex your, uh, your wrist right here, okay? And you'll compress it together like this. So this is about 90 degrees. And we want to hold it for about a minute. After a minute, if we have a, a reproduction of the same pain that you're getting, you know, tingling, numbness, pain, whatever, in that area, that is considered a positive test. It's supposed to be a pretty good test as far as tests go for reliability and specific to that particular problem. The other one is the Tunnel sign, okay? So there's one way to do a Tunnel sign where you, you basically, you're tapping over that area for a minute or 60 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds, and you're trying to reproduce that symptoms, and you start noticing, wow, I'm starting to notice that same feeling in that area, you may have that, um, uh, you know, a positive, you know, a compression or a positive carpal tunnel, unfortunately. Anyway, um, one way to make this a little bit more sensitive is to extend the wrist as you do it and do the same thing in that area. That'll make the test more sensitive. Okay, um, someone is very highly sensitive, they'll, they'll feel it right away, you don't even have to go to 60 times. Okay, same thing with the Phalen's test, um, as you bring yourself into that position. Um, it can happen right away or it may require, in early cases where you haven't had carpal tunnel where it's not as serious, it may take longer to reproduce those symptoms. So those are two tests you can do. Um, and it just kind of gives you something to work on. It gives you some information to talk to your doctor so he can kind of um, make a proper diagnosis, which is 
the nerve conduction studies, and also the examination, and what you tell them. It's very important that you explain how this happens, um, what, how it affects you, and you know what your goals are. Okay, hope this video helps you out a lot. In our next video, we're gonna talk about uh, the top, top exercises to help you with carpal tunnel, which is more effective in the early stages and the, um, 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 the stages which you basically have um, um, the very start of carpal tunnel syndrome. Well, unfortunately, once you get to more severe forms, it becomes more of a surgical type uh, candidate and that becomes a little more serious. Hey, hope this helps you out. Uh, hit the subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, like or share of anyone that might be dealing with this problem. Have a great day.